WYMT Mountain News at 5.30. Good evening, I'm Steve Hensley. The Coal Run Police Department in Pike County is asking for the community's help to identify two people they believe are connected to a car break-in. WYMT's Buddy Forbes has more. Monday night was a little too silent for one man in Pike County as thieves broke into his car outside of his cold run home. And they actually got into the vehicle, uh, found his wallet sitting there, and took it from the vehicle. Officers with the Cold Run Police Department say that missing wallet was then used to track down the thieves. It contained several credit cards. Those credit cards were used at several businesses here in Cold Run, as well as several businesses in Stanville, Kentucky. The victim told police he followed the fraudulent purchases using his mobile banking app. Now they believe one man and one woman caught on store surveillance footage may be connected to the crime. Just anyone with any information on the identity of the two subjects pictured, to urge them to contact the Coleman Police Department. Uh, we want them in for questioning. Officers are relying on the community to put names with the faces. There's a lot of apps you can use for tracking your credit cards. Um, they'll actually notify you when they're used. Highly recommend those apps because they can, they can save you. And asking everyone to stay vigilant as the holidays come to a close. In Pike County, Buddy Forbes, WYMT, Mountain News. The number for the Coleron Police Department is 606-437-0902. Callers can remain anonymous. Police say a 13-year-old stole a car in Knox County on Christmas. The Barberville Police Department went on a chase that ended near the White Oak subdivision after getting a call about someone driving recklessly. Officers say the teen even went through some yards of people living along that road. The chase ended when the teen wrecked the car where it caught on fire. He refused to come out of the vehicle for us, had to be removed, and still refused to show his hands or follow commands. I don't really know why he stole the car. Um, but no, it's not, it's not very often a 13-year-old would do something that way. The teen was taken to the Breathitt County Juvenile Detention Center. Well, it's been a very gorgeous and mild day here in the mountains, and that's continuing as we head into the evening. We're seeing a beautiful sunset out there looking on top of Mountain Parkway over into Slade. You're seeing those pinks starting to show up, mixing with just the few clouds that are in the sky, and then even looking on top of Buffalo Mountain as that sun starting to set behind the mountains. Please, if you have any good photos, definitely send them my way. Temperature still very mild out there. It's 530, and we are in the lower 60s. Get out and enjoy this evening while you can because it's not going to last too much longer. Now, as we head into tomorrow, we're actually going to be right near 60 degrees once again with those mostly cloudy skies. And here's what I mean when I say it's not going to last much longer. We'll continue those 60s as we head into your Saturday and Sunday, but we are tracking the next system that will move in very late Saturday into your Sunday, bringing soggy weather and those more average temperatures by the time we get into the new work week. We'll talk about that in a new, new Year's Eve and New Year's Day forecast coming up in just a little bit. All right, thank you, Paige. A man is in critical condition after a Christmas Day fire in Madison County. It broke out around 8.30 last night in the Waco community. That man was taken to the hospital with serious burns. Fire crews have not determined a cause for the fire, but as Kristen Kennedy explains, the man's son says he thinks he may have an idea of what happened. As of right now, he's in critical condition. A lot of people are worried about Doug Coyle's father. Said he's going to be unconscious for they know a couple more days probably and I guess time will just tell. A fire broke out at his home Christmas night. Neighbors saw the flames and the smoke and called 911. These pictures from the Waco Fire Department show just how bad his house burned. Ralph Coyle suffered burns too. Firefighters say they treated his chest, head, arms and hands. He's 78 years old. Uh, he's that's the only worst thing against him, but, you know, he's burnt pretty bad. The homeowner's son thinks there must have been an explosion. It's hard to really convey the depth of that explosion, but the glass from the front windows scattered throughout the whole yard. It went as far down as the end of the property line right at the road. But I hope everybody keeps him in his prayers, and I hope, I hope everything's good. Firefighters didn't list a preliminary cause for the flames. Doug Coyle says insurance agents will eventually come out and take a look at the damage. In Madison County, Kristen Kennedy, WKYT. And again, fire crews have not yet determined a cause of that fire. 
More than 200 Kentucky mining employees will be losing their jobs. A warn notice was filed for Genesis Coal Mine in Centertown, Kentucky. That's in Ohio County. The notice indicates the layoff is permanent. The mine's owner, Murray Energy, filed for bankruptcy back in October. This layoff affects 250 people. It's expected to take effect in February. A Marine veteran and former police officer has officially filed to run for U.S. Congress. Democrat Josh Hicks filed with the Secretary of State's office this morning. He is running for the sixth congressional seat. He's hoping a primary win will put him up against Republican incumbent Congressman Andy Barr. Barr is seeking his fifth term. A man is charged with identity theft in multiple counties. State police arrested Chester Riley. Police in Graves County say they received a report of a stolen wallet over the weekend. Investigators say they caught Riley on video with the victim's wallet and personal documents. They also say he tried to apply for a few credit cards. Riley is charged with identity theft, fraudulent use of a credit card, and attempted fraudulent use of a credit card. Former Governor Matt Bevin's controversial pardons were a shock to many, including the mother of a nine-year-old rape victim. She says knowing the man convicted for the heinous crime is now walking free has been nearly unbearable. Shottle served just 19, or Micah Shottle served just 19 months of a 23-year sentence before he was pardoned. In a radio interview last week, Bevin claimed there was no physical evidence in the case. But a 2012 study found that about 90% of child victims don't show physical evidence of abuse. The victim's mother says Bevin's decision was like a slap in the face. I think my daughter is going to return to counseling uh, because she has read Bevin's comments about her, and I know it upsets her. Other than that, we're just kind of taking one day at a time. A prosecutor who helped put Shottle behind bars says he's looking at how this case got to the governor's desk and if any favors were involved. The FBI is also reportedly looking into some of Bevin's controversial pardons. A powerful winter storm in Southern California has brought some post-Christmas travel to a standstill. It comes as more Americans than ever are planning to drive or fly this holiday week. CBS's Hillary Lane reports. Snow in the mountains outside of Los Angeles shut down parts of Interstate 5 and 15, leaving hundreds of people stranded. i never seen it this bad. Not this bad. We tried going up, but we started sliding, so we just rolled all the way back, back to the gas station. Below the snow line, authorities are diverting traffic, offering alternative routes to some so people can get to their holiday destinations. It's not like there's any signage. It's just suddenly everybody's getting off of here and there's no instruction on what to do. Drivers in California are some of the 115.6 million people traveling this holiday season. That's 4.3 million more than last year. And while delays are due to weather in the West, sheer numbers are expected to double or even triple travel time on the East Coast, both Thursday and Friday afternoons. At a rest stop on the New Jersey Turnpike, we found drivers were prepared. We left as early as we could, sure, to beat the afternoon rush. So. It's been pretty good so far. Inside the nation's airports, travelers can expect long lines. An estimated 47 and a half million people in the U.S. are flying over the holidays, determined to escape. Nothing's going to stop us from getting to Jamaica. <laughs> a new storm in the nation's midsection will travel to the East Coast by the weekend, possibly bringing more delays with it. Hillary Lane, CBS News, Secaucus, New Jersey. Coming up on Mountain News at 530, people with disabilities can be paid less than the minimum wage. Disabled workers are split on whether that helps or hurts them. And we're going to see a few more clouds as we head into tonight. We'll continue those warmer temperatures, but soggy weather returns by the time we get into the weekend. I'll have those details coming up in just a little bit. Several four-wheelers have been stolen in Letcher County, but without proof of ownership, the Sheriff's Office struggles to retrieve stolen property. Find out what paperwork you need coming up.